Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to class. Today we will talk about register and style. We are familiar with uh, terms like language, dialect, vernacular, standard language, non-standard language, right? In the in the same uh, class, based on the use, we have variations in the language and uh, they are called register and style. So today we are going to talk about register and style but before we begin let us understand the idea called dialect. What is a dialect and uh, is it a different language? Is there any difference between language and dialect or uh, are they the same? See, the moment we say dialect, we assign a kind of, uh, you know, low prestige value to the variety. And when we say language, notionally we believe that a language is a standard form used in formal domains, has a high prestige value, and you know, it is in it has written form, but as as such, there is no difference between a dialect and a language. These are two different terms. Dialect is socio culturally and politically, uh, you know, determined. We all speak a dialect. We all speak dialect of, and uh, in quotes, imagined language. We don't speak a language, we speak a dialect. It may be standard dialect. A particular dialect may be chosen to be standard dialect for all official administrative formal usages. Becomes language. So those varieties of a language or within that language family, that variety which gets institutional support is used in formal domains, has written literature, reference materials, manuals. So in some way, it has been you know, processed to be standard. So some external agency you know, takes lead in processing and developing it as a standard dialect to be used for all official administrative government and you know media science and technology education purposes so as a linguist as a student of linguistics or language science we don't find any linguistic basis of of distinguishing a dialect from a language all dialects are equally competent equally rich and qualified to be used in all formal domains, right? So the whole idea of standard language is politically and socially motivated. Uh, we might have, uh, we, we might have such discussions in our uh, other videos about the process of standardization, how a particular dialect is chosen, right? to be standard language, how it is made standard and uh, selection, codification, you know. So how we create a corpus, how we create, you know, reference manuals, thesaurus, dictionaries, style sheets and make it uniform and, you know, a a assign prestige value to it in terms of status planning. We create a lot of material, supporting material 
in terms of corpus planning and then we go for educating our next generation our young children and uh, helping them acquire this variety called acquisition planning so it is planned by agencies those agencies which claim a statutory you know rights so this is a prescriptive deliberate initiative otherwise all languages that we speak are a form of a particular variety of a particular language so the dialects we all speak dialects so we don't find any linguistic basis for differentiating between language and dialect but in in broader understanding among the common people dialect is seen as inferior to language so the kind of prestige value that you assign to a particular dialect become it becomes a language so we don't find any difference between the two linguistically speaking and there is no universally accepted criterion to for distinguishing these two varieties of language dialect from language and the distinction between dialect and language is therefore subjective arbitrary and it depends on the user's preferred frame of reference so how you look at a dialect that determines whether it is a dialect or language so frame of references right so there are certain frames of references which help us uh, you know understand or identify a dialect but one thing for sure that dialect the idea called dialect or the term called dialect is socially and politically motivated otherwise hard, there is hardly any difference between a dialect and a language all dialects are equal no hierarchy attached we may find variation in language use variation in language in terms of you know the geographical location right so in a particular region a particular variety is spoken with some variations at the level of phonology at the level of morphology at the level of syntax structural differences right at the level of vocabulary so you might find variation you know in a particular region sometimes you might find variations depending on the class and the caste the class social class so you know but these variations can be understood in terms of the three frames of references and how we determine that variety x is a dialect of a particular language we have to look at that language dialect that variety with a particular frame of reference and these these frames of references are linguistic distance right mutual intelligibility and socio political factors attached to it right so when we say linguistic distance that means we are strictly talking in terms of structural variations variations at the level level of sounds variations at the level of uh, uh, vocabulary variations at the level of syntactic morpho syntactic structures so to what extent to what degree we find these variations right so dialects are different varieties with little variations that i am talking about so they are distinct enough to be seen as a different variety but not different enough to be called a separate language so the the, the linguistic distance if the linguistic distance is closer if the variations are not very high right then that particular variety is dialect of that particular language the second frame of reference is a uh, mutual intelligibility so to what extent two varieties of a language are mutually uh, you know intelligible so speakers of both the varieties understand each other though they use two different uh, set of variables in their language 
but they are able to understand each other. So communication is not blocked and they can communicate, share and you know interact comfortably. So if it is it, it is possible that the mutual if, if the mutual intelligibility is possible between variety X and variety Y, we call it two different dialects of language X right x1 and x2 if they are mutually intelligible they are a variety of language x so there are dialect there are they are dialects of language x so the first frame of reference is linguistic distance so these these differences are not uh, you know too much so when the dialect or the variety shows close affinity with the language it is a dialect and then when the two or three or four different uh, varieties and the speakers of these varieties are able to understand each other and if these varieties are mutually intelligible, if these varieties do not create communication gap, then they are dialects of the same language. Then socio-political factors. So it, it refers to the linguistic attitude language attitude, social linguistic attitude that you have towards a particular variety and uh, what kind of value is attached, judgmental values are attached, prestige values are attached, right. How do you look at this particular variety, right. So these factors determine whether it will be considered a separate language or a variety. I mean, if you look at Census of India 2011 data, and if you look at the mother tongues, even in scheduled mother tongues like Hindi, for example, you find more than 40 languages attached to Hindi, put under Hindi bracket as dialects of Hindi. Bhojpuri, Angika, Bajika, Magi, Braj, Avadi. So they are all put in one bracket under Hindi, right, with the belief that they are mutually intelligible, the linguistic distance is not very far and putting them under Hindi in the Hindi heartland, these languages are spoken in the north part of northern part of the India, uh, there are certain socio-political factors attached to it. So they are considered dialects of Hindi. So, depending on what frame of reference you are looking at, we determine whether X and Y are dialects of a particular language or not. So, this is the uh, dichotomy and this is the uh, broad understanding of difference between language and dialect. But, you know, as a, as a student of language and language science, linguistics, we, f we find no difference between a language and a dialect except for certain external factors which attribute such classification. Otherwise, each dialect is a potential language. They are different. Each dialect has quali uh, can qualify to be a standard language. But this process of standardization is political, institutional. So it can be any dialect and all dialects qualify. We choose one to standardize and you know use in formal domains. So uh, you know all speakers as speakers of a particular language, we all speak a particular variety. But that particular dominant variety becomes standard language by institutional interference and it becomes a language. So there is no difference, linguistic difference, there is no linguistic argument and on, on the basis on which we can determine uh, a status of language as a dialect or standard language. So they are almost like synonymous, linguistically speaking. But the broader understanding says that language is that a particular dialect which is standard, has written form, has corpus, literature, Grammar, grammar books, reference books, manual, style manuals. So they are standard language. 
Now, a dialect is a regional, temporal, or social variety within a single language group, right? So, a dialect which is spoken in a particular region with a def definitive set of variations from its siblings, it is regional dialect. When a particular language with certain uh, set of variables is used by a particular social class, it is called a sociolect, right? So, it can be temporal, it can be social, it can be regional. Uh, a dialect differs in terms of grammar, pronunciation and vocabulary from the standard language, right? But not different enough to be called a separate language. So, mutual intelligibility plays a crucial role in deciding whether it is a language or it is a dialect or an independent language, right? But this division is purely political, purely social, right? There are social factors, political factors, no linguistic argument and basis on which we can distinguish. Now, regional dialects, as the name suggests, are spoken by people of a particular region or geographical space. So, you can have, you know, something like, you know, Tamil as a language, has multiple varieties. Madurai Tamil, for that matter, is has little variation. A Chennai Tamil, for that matter, right? Punjabi. Punjabi in Chandigarh and Punjabi is the remote part of Punjab, they are different, but both the language is Punjabi with dialectal variations. Look at Hindi for that matter. <coughs> Look at Hindi for that matter. So, Hindi has many regional dialects, variation, variants, you know, varieties. Uh, Bhojpuri for that matter. Though Bhojpuri is listed under Hindi in census 2011, but Bhojpuri is a well established language. And it has variants like Nagpuri, like Purbi, right? For that matter, Mauritian Bhojpuri, Mauritius, Bhojpuri spoken in Mauritius is different. With, but mutual intelligibility is the criterion that brings it close to the you know, referent language called Bhojpuri. We call it a referent language because we all speak a particular variety, right? Uh, Angika for that matter. So, a variety which is, uh, you know, geographical, uh, was spoken at a particular geographical location, a particular region, region specific, is called the regional dialect, okay? Then, sociolect. It refers to a particular variety within the same language is spoken by a particular social class. So, sociolect, right? And in the same continuation, if the dialect is, uh, you know, a variety according to the user, register a term refer to a particular variety is according to the use of the, the, the language. So, it is it's huge centric, it, it is context centric, it is domain centric, right? The term register for a particular variety used in a particular domain by the same speaker, right? Uh, a different form or a different variety is used for a different purpose. So, this term register was first used by T. W. Reed in 1956 and it was later popularized by many linguists who were working on language variations. So, working on variationist tradition and they were working on language variations and they were trying to understand, right? 
language variation according to the user defined by social determinants like background their their social background their status their geographical location sex and the age so they wanted to see uh, variations based on these determinants and this term became popular register halliday says i quote each speaker has a range of varieties and choices between them at different times so i as a speaker of a particular variety choose a different form of that same variety for a particular purpose so i can be highly formal if i am talking giving talk in a in a seminar i am so using the same language but my form of language will be different my tone will be different my tenor will be different choice of words will be different the degree of formality style will be highly formal if i am talking in a seminar it will be more analytical and you know formal argumentative if i am talking about the same topic with my family members within the confines of my drawing room my style of speaking will be casual informal choice of words will be informal right and the my tone my tenor will be entirely different from that of my same talk in a formal seminar so it is according to the domain where i am using this variety so registers are the domain specific varieties used by the same user in a different socio cultural context right so the study of dialect is further complicated i quote from uh, wado and fuller 2015 the study of a dialect is further complicated by the fact that speakers can adopt different styles and registers of speaking and both spoken and written language can be seen as belonging to different genre of language so they are not changing the variety they are changing the form of it so form in terms of lexical choices form in terms of tone form in terms of tenor form in terms of uh, degree of formality right that is called a register so while differences is di- in dialects have to do with the speakers and their regional or social identities styles registers and genre have to do with different context of use so language and and dialect are the varieties according to the user and how they construct identity out of it the variety that that they, they socialize in that that they are you know conditioned in but registers or styles are the the form of that particular variety according to the context or the domain in which it is it is used that is the difference we need to understand right so i can be using same dialect same language on different occasions in different domains with a different degree of formality with a different degree of lexical choices with a different degree of tone with a different degree of tenor so it is based on the contextual use of it so it is user centric dialects and language are user centric that we need to just understand the distinction so we can deduct register is another uh, you know complicating factor in any study of language varieties and generally speaking registers are the sets of language items associated with discrete occupational and social groups so you we don't find a huge difference in terms of phonology morphology or syntax like we find in dialects the variation here is uh the situation social situation 
or the context or domain where you are you are using it so you may be using the same variety or language but the degree of formality differs the the degree of tonal differences tenor differ right they are different so it is it is domain specific context specific use of the variety aga 2006 describes a register as a linguistic repertoire that is associated cultural internally with particular social practices and with persons who engage in such practices so for example we have we have a few words and terms used in medical sciences then you know occupations like engineering then occupations like you know let's say uh, sports academics right so you have domain specific set of lexicons and words which are used and understood in and they are in high currency in that particular domain they are not in ordinary speech they are not found in ordinary speech so when you are you are addressing uh, a group of doctors in any medical seminar uh, your style your register will be you know you know focused on or uh, will be medical science centric so the terms the jargon technical words that you are using uh, you know are in, understood by those experts and specialization people with a specialization in medical sciences but you cannot use the same variety or same form of language outside that domain so it is domain specific engineers in the gathering of engineers right so this is register uh speakers learn different registers through socialization process right so when i am trained if i am trained as a medical prax- medicine practitioner in medical sciences my register will be different limited to that restricted to that particular domain i may be trained as engineer so my register will be different within that domain right so if i am a religious preacher my register will be entirely different so it depends on the domain or the context in which you are using it so registers are domain centric context centric form of language form of variety that we use in our speech acts right um so uh so registers help us create multiple identities so i am a speaker of language x okay that's one identity i have then i am an engineer so so my register in that particular engineering domain will be different right so registers help us construct an identity at a specific time and place the same young lecturer giving lecture in the class using a different form of language of the same language and the same lecturer meeting you in the in the let's say college canteen will be talking to you with the, in the same language but the ten, tone tenor and degree of formality will be different the same lecturer talks to wife and family members and kids inside the house is a different person no the same person the same language but degree of formality tone and tenor are different right the same lecturer talking to friends in a very informal setting so the form of variety that you are using the form of language that you are using in a particular domain right that is your register so you have different registers and different identities in different domains within the same language or variety so that is register and style for you talking about style uh 
we can speak very formally and we can be very casual and informal in our conversation so when to become highly formal and when to become informal casual and relaxed it is determined by the socio cultural circumstances they are governed by these such choices are governed by socio cultural circumstances so uh, for example ceremonial occasions where you have rituals let's say uh, you know valedictory function and look at the kind of uh, tone tenor and you know, formality in the language that we speak that we use in public gathering right uh, let's let's imagine convocation function after you complete your degrees you get your degrees in a formally organized convocation ceremony and the look at the for example you know announcements how they look at the pro, pro, no, proclamations announcements or uh, you know speech on that occasion so ceremonial occasions and we are highly formal in our in our use of that language if i am giving a lecture in public general public i am formal but not to the degree i am formal giving a convocation speech so i am less formal but not casual at all then casual occasions like uh, you know conversations like i am talking to my family members in my drawing room talking to my friends in a restaurant right even talking to you in in a marketplace if i happen to meet you in a marketplace the way i am talking to you the way i am using that particular language i'll be casual and informal right and very intimate conversation then you are highly form, informal and casual so so the degree of formality right or the style of your speech that you choose is determined by is governed by the circumstances and socio cultural contexts it also depends on the participants in your speech act who are participating right so level of formality depends on various factors in that sense the kind of occasion as we talked about ceremonial occasions for that matter also various social age various various factors like you know social uh, category age and other differences that exist between participants in that speech act uh, what kind of task is involved here am i talking or am i writing degree of formality vary so you know because written forms are highly frozen frozen forms so i am very formal while i write so when we write about certain things we are very formal you can explain uh, let's say the skills involved in uh, cooking something a particular dish right in a very casual formal uh, informal way you can also be formal while you are talking about a particular recipe to a group of people but when you write the recipe of the same dish the degree of formality increases you become expressive more formal and that that particular language form differs from so even the content even if the contents are the same the form of language changes so there are multiple factors which govern and determine what form and to what extent will be formal in our speech in a particular domain at a particular occasion so moving on dialects are the varieties according to the users but registers are varieties according to use right and we can we can we can have examples of registers like scientific religious legal commercial uh, you know airport 
announcements, railway station announcements, registers of telephone operators, registers in call centers. So language remains the same, but the context changes and that's why we have variations. So we have various different forms being used here, right? You might see a static forms, you know, like for example, railway announcements. So that is frozen, almost frozen. We don't find any variation anywhere on any railway station. That is almost frozen. Announcement at airport, right? Announcements of delays of the flights, announcements of the delays of the trains. Your inconvenience cause is deeply regretted. Such a frozen line. We all the time see, you know, hear that. Uh, if you call, talk to your call center executive, the same speech format, frozen speech format, right? Almost similar uh, words and sentences. So we have different registers, a form of language used in science and technology, form of language used in religious deliberations and discussions and, you know, speech. Then you have uh, language in legal, uh, you know, legal, legal language for legal purposes. So legal languages. When we say legal language, I don't mean any, anything called illegal language. Legal language means language used in legal fraternity, judiciary. So you find the proclamation of sentences in ju in, in judgments almost frozen. So these are different registers. Uh, so, talk in a religious gathering can be serious and full of static expressions. When you are performing rituals, the priest can be highly static and frozen in terms of expressions and, and sentences. Then, uh, talk at seminar can be very analytical, argumentative. Discussion with friends and family can be highly informal and casual. So registers are the variety of language or the form of language used or implied according to the situation, according to the context. So registers are huge centric, dialects are user centric. That distinction we have to make and that distinction distinction we have to understand. Now, when we look at registers and formality scale, registers can be understood in terms of scale of formality and style. So, we do not have a clear cut definition and understanding, but we all broadly understand, right? It's like, you know, understanding difference between dialect and register, language and register, dialect and language is like, you know, distinction between a hill and a mountain. Now, broadly we do understand what is a mountain and what is a hill. What is a cup and what is a mug? We do understand broadly. What is a bed? And what is a couch or sofa? We do understand broadly. Difference between chair and sofa, right? It is cultural and highly relative, right? Uh, so, what if, suppose I am talking about difference between cup and a mug? What if we have the shortest mug possible and the tallest or the biggest cup possible? If I start increasing the size of the cup to an extent, and if I did start decreasing the size of a mug to an extent, there comes a point when we find no difference, almost overlapping. So it's the range. So the distinction is clear at extremes, but as we move closer, the distinction blurs. So, degree of formality also is highly relative and subjective, right? But broadly we understand what is informal form of language, what is formal forming, uh, form of language, what is the degree of formality, we, we broadly understand. 
So Martin Jones came up with, uh, you know, five distinctions. So he gave a scale of formality, and uh, we do not have a clear cut agreement as to how a spectrum of formality is divided. However, Martin Jus describes five styles in spoken English, and these are number one, frozen, right, formal, consultative casual and intimate. So Martin Jose gives us five you know uh, different categories or labels in degree of formality in spoken English and it is applies to all languages right It simply applies to all languages. So frozen or a static register means uh, Majority in the majority cases, written forms which are pronounced or spoken at religious uh, occasions, rituals, all kinds of pledges that we take, oaths, a statutory oath that we take, all sorts of texts related to rituals. So, we do not make a variation, they are frozen, static and even if we speak, we speak in the similar verb uh, you know, form, we do not change the words, we do not change the orders, we do not change the text, it remains the same. Like for example, if you go to marriage ceremony in a church, the way the, the, the priest pronounces the wedding, right? or uh, look at the oath ceremonies that we have when we take oath the the form or the text is frozen everyone except for changing the name speaks the same thing so this is called frozen or a static register then formal and what is the characteristics of formal register in formal registers as Martin Jose says, one way participation. Right? That means it's so for example, if I am giving a talk in a seminar, in a in a conference, I am reading a paper in a conference, I am giving a seminar in a conference, talk in a conference, right? No interruptions. I finish my talk and in between no interruptions. Right. I allow people to ask questions at the end of my presentation. Right. So that is formal, highly formal. But you might have seen certain uh, talks in which anybody can ask any question any time. That is consultative. So when you speak, you can have counter questions. People can intervene, interject, ask questions intervene so that is consultative right so consultative uh, form or the degree of formality involves two way participation right background information is provided prior knowledge is not assumed anybody can ask any question if somebody doesn't understand interruptions are allowed and uh, you know, so when when I'm talking to you, I'm I'm teaching you, I'm giving a talk in the class. Anybody can raise hand, ask questions. Even if you do not have any prior knowledge of the topic, you can talk and ask or raise your doubts. It's consultative. That means interactive, right? So both the partners interact. Informal, formal register. We have one way participation no interruptions and uh, the context and the specifications are very important right exact definition is important of the terms it includes presentations or introductions between strangers 
So it follows a but very highly formal format and one way, uh, you know, um, participation. But when you talk about consultative, it is interactive. It is two-way participation. It allows the other partner in your communication act, speech act, to ask questions, raise questions, interject, intervene. Then we have casual. Then it says the casual scale. Uh, so in, in casual registers, you know, we have in-group friends, close friends, family members, where interruptions, overlaps in, in, in speech, you know, uh, selection of uh, casual, tone is casual, tenor is casual, informal, selection of words, you are not particular about selecting a particular set of words, definitions and background assumptions are not important. So you are freely talking. Intimate is the highest degree of informality. So it is purely non-public and uh, intonations more important than wording and grammar. How you will have lots of idiosyncrasies, half in sentences, overlapping speech. So that is intimate, right? So it is it is it is highly popular and used among close family members, you know, your wife, your girlfriend, your mother, and very close friends. So that is intimate. So Martin Jones gives us five scales: frozen, formal, consultative, casual, and intimate. But again, degree of formality and choice of words, sentences, right? The tone, the tenor. They are governed by the social situation in which we use a particular variety or dialect or language. So, you know, in conclusion, we can understand that language and dialects are the varieties of language according to the user, right? But registers and styles are the form of language the you you know which is huge centric so you use them in a particular domain they are linked to your occupation they are linked to your profession right uh, they have a set of uh, domain specific words we call them jargon technical words right and the degree of formality depends on the occasion and the participants. So who are the participants and what is the occasion? So this is register and style. So I hope that we now understand the difference between dialect and register. Right? We will continue our discussion about uh, genre, register, the style, dialect and language in following classes and uh, you know when we talk about language contact and variation we will again come to this this topic so this is it for now and uh, you know post your questions in the forum and we'll have a recapitulation of all these ideas towards end of the course so for now Thank you very much.